Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this special review uh, from Really Dicey. This is Manny. And I'm RJ. And today we're reviewing Tales from Eriador, an adventure book for the Lord of the Rings role playing 5e, published in 2023 by Free League. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. Tales from Eriador is a set of six adventures set in the Middle Earth region of Eriador, originally written for the One Ring game system. It's been adapted to the Lord of the Rings role-playing 5e game in this book. You will need the Lord of the Rings role-playing 5e book, and the Ruins of Eriador sourcebook might be helpful to have as well, but it's not required. There are some references to content in the Ruins of Eriador sourcebook in, this, in these adventures, and suggestions on how to weave those elements in, so I recommend having it. Now, this review is intended for lore masters, so it will contain some spoilers that are intended to help you determine if this book is right for your playgroup. If you're a player who wants to know if you should encourage your dungeon slash lore master to run this for your group, then the short answer is yes, absolutely. Now, spoilers are fair game from this point forward. During the six adventures, uh, one of the player characters will uncover their ancestral heroic lineage and take up an unfinished quest to vanquish an ancient evil. This will require some work from the lore master and a player to retrofit this backstory onto one of the player characters. This doesn't mean this character becomes the star of the adventures, rather a motivation for the group. The book has guidance on how to do this and what to consider, but you should know that this is an important part of this campaign. So this book has six adventures, and we'll give you a summary of each one. First chapter, first adventure, a troll hole, if there ever was one. Now, this adventure is for third to fifth level characters. It begins in the town of Bree, a familiar setting to fans of The Lord of the Rings, in the Prancing Pony Inn, where one autumn night, while sitting by the fire, an exuberant dwarf calls for brave souls who might be interested in treasure. Eventually, the player characters will find out, as the title of the adventure suggests, that it involves trouble with trolls. It's a fairly straightforward adventure, with plenty of excellent characters for roleplay and a wonderful setting to explore. And it's quite challenging unless the players are clever. So for example, one of the trolls is a special kind of stone troll that can hold his breath for hours and swim like a crocodile, hiding in the water and snatching victims from boats or shore. Adventure number two, missing about and boats. And this is for fourth to fifth level characters. And this is the adventure that will begin the main quest line of the book. It's a terribly understated title for what this adventure is about. There are rich layers of backstory to this adventure. And at their foundation are references to Turin. Yes, that Turin, which might delight the deepest Tolkien nerds. The quest will take you on ships west to the Elven Havens, north near the lands of the Lossoth, and into uncharted seas only known in the memories of old sailors. There, on an island with an ancient Numenorean fortress, the only remaining part of this region of sunken Beleriand, the heroes are confronted with a daunting task that many generations of Middle-earth's heroes have failed to accomplish. The non-player characters are very important to the story, and how the player characters interact with them will drive the plot one way or another. There is the old sailor who lost his daughter in this part of the sea, a Lossoth hunting party tracking a gargantuan sea beast, and more. This adventure is really fantastic and full of difficult choices for the players to make. At its conclusion, the players now have a long-term objective, destroying this ancient evil, but it will take more than determination to do so. Kings of Little Kingdoms. Yeah, this third adventure is also for fourth to fifth level characters. Uh, the main objective looms in the background of the story about returning a wayward hobbit who is recruited by a wizard to go on a questionable quest. Uh, players will travel to the edge of settled lands, navigate the conflicts of frontier folk and desperate outlaws, and face down a new threat as the evil dead return. Not to strike without need. In this fourth adventure, uh, which is for fifth to sixth level characters, the characters are asked to bring a prisoner to the city of Tharbad, which is described in great detail in the Ruins of Eriador book, uh, to bring this prisoner to the city for a prisoner exchange. The prisoner, who's an outlaw, claims his innocence, 
and eventually reveals that he was working for a ranger and a spy within the city. The ranger and spy get word of an alarming threat, and the player characters might find themselves standing between Eriador's people and the armies of evil. So this story can go in several directions, depending on who the players decide to believe and how they act. Wonder of the Northern World. This fifth adventure is for sixth to seventh level characters. This is the most sandbox-like adventure in the book. The conflicts are introduced and the players can navigate them as they wish. It begins as the player characters are asked to deliver a message to a dwarven settlement. When they arrive at that settlement though, they find the dwarves have been recently massacred by orcs. Perhaps the player characters chase down the orcs to recover some prisoners. Uh, maybe they seek help from other dwarves to assault the orcs stronghold. The stories in this adventure also interweave with the details of the larger story of Mordor rising, with references to Moria's demise, secret ways, and Thrain's imprisonment in Dol Guldur. And the final adventure, the quest of Amon Gurutos. Yeah, this is for characters seventh level or higher. The threads and clues from all the previous adventures lead the player characters to the northern expanses of Forod Waith. The actions of the player characters in previous adventures may haunt or help them now as they travel the land of the Losoth and make their way to the Hill of Fear, the source of immense evil power. Along the way, they encounter a guardian of the way, a mysterious and strangely powerful elf. And within the Hill of Fear are terrible dreads that will challenge your players. And destroying the Hill of Fear means overcoming the fear of death itself. And there are several suggested ways that this can be accomplished. Now, the One Ring version doesn't have levels. Um, did you feel that each adventure was appropriate for the levels uh, given for, for the players? I think it's really going to vary on the class makeup of the parties in the 5e system, um, and also the play style of the players. If players have played a bit of Lord of the Rings roleplay and they understand that they need to be more creative uh, in their approaches, then um, you might typically see in a 5e adventure, which is a little bit more straightforward usually, um, they will have a better chance of surviving. And there's a wide variety of characters in the book as well, uh, which can be a lot of fun for lore masters to play and for players to interact with. Um, there's like characters from small children up to like immortal beings. And the motivations and tactics of the villains and the monsters are smart. And they drive the story forward, even in, in conflict or in direct combat. Uh, they're not just static bags of hit points. Uh, they're, they're quite wily. Do you feel that uh, these adventures uh, give the feel of Lord of the Rings? Yeah, these adventures definitely um, incorporate a lot from Tolkien's published works. There's a lot of references to things that are in the appendices of Lord of the Rings or in Silmarillion. Um, so if you are a Tolkien fan fan, uh, you will pick up on these things and probably really enjoy that part of it a lot. So should you get this book? Well, a um, couple other things. So there are no content warnings, but first be aware that there are scenes of massacre with mutilations. Um, there's the well-known cannibalistic nature of trolls, which is no surprise. And there's also um, scenes with small children who are directly in harm's way. So be aware if that's right for your group. Uh, the maps in this book are drawn in an isometric perspective and they convey the general mood and feel of locations, but they may not have the precision of like tunnels and doors that some people like in their 5e battle maps. If you're playing online, you might prefer to use a storyboard style, theater of the mind, or search out specific maps to use for detailed movement. These adventures work hand in hand with the Ruins of Eriador book, and they weave in the well-known and lesser known stories of Middle-earth from Tolkien's published work. Um, they also reinforce each other. Each adventure reinforces each other to create like a fully connected and breathing world. So in summary, the region of Eriador is rich with history and lore. Uh, players have a chance to discover their heroic lineage and a powerful weapon. Uh, the adventures are a mix of personal stories and epic stories, and it's a faithful adaptation of Tolkien's work. 
So if you're going to role play anything in Middle Earth, then I highly recommend this one as your first choice or your very next choice after Shire Adventures. Thank you everyone for watching. Um, please stay safe out there. It's pretty cold where we're at in this part of the world currently. Um, and uh, yeah, stay tuned for our next review. Take care everyone.